Hey game developers, welcome back to the next part of this C Sharp course. And so what we're going to do in this one is go over the basic data in C Sharp and most programming languages, uh, which are called primitives. Um, and what these will basically do is store th uh, data such as like letters or characters and numbers, essentially. Um, as well as, for example, the boolean is a value of either true or false. Um, and so, so it's really boolean, number, and uh, character data. And that's about um, everything we're storing here. Uh, as well as uh, these objects, which are kind of an abstract thing. Um, everything out of the primitives actually is inheriting um, object. Every kind of data in C Sharp inherits from object. So that's what we're going to be uh, going over here. And so to begin, I'm going to hit my Windows key and I'll type in VIS, which will pop up Visual Studio 2017. Um, if that doesn't pop up, and, or if you didn't have it installed or something, actually make sure to go watch the uh, first episode, which is in the top right right now. Click that card and that will be the uh, tutorial on how to install it. Otherwise, let's just uh, open it up right now. And uh, you'll see this. Um, this launch screen here, so we just need to uh, create a new application here. So I'm going to hit uh, File and New, and then I'm going to hit Project. Um, and so you should have a Visual C Sharp tab here, and in here under, um, I believe, Windows Classic Desktop, you should see Console App here. Uh, and if you, if you can't find any of this, then um, I would say you need to go into your Visual Studio installer and reinstall .NET. Um, maybe you just didn't install it in the first place. So for those where it is working, let's just uh, continue. Um, so we'll give this a name. Um, I mean, I'll just type primitive tutorial. And I'll hit OK. Doesn't really matter where you save it. Um, and notice that you have a bunch of stuff here that just got placed. You don't you don't just have a blank screen where you where you type uh, characters or anything. Um, we do have a bunch of usings here, and we have a namespace, a class, and this is called a function, which we'll cover later. Um, so why don't we go ahead and, I guess, test out like using some primitive data. Uh, I mean, what I'm going to do here is go inside of our main function, um, and I'll hit enter. Uh, and so one thing that's important to know is that this main function will always, uh, it will always be called first because um, it, yeah, it's the main function of the entire program. So when, when our application is built and runs, whatever is in here is going to um, be performed. So in C Sharp, if we want to print something out, we always do um, console, which is a class, dot write line, which is a static method. Um, and in here we can write whatever data that will be converted to a string that we can read in the command line. So why don't we begin with um, writing a string here since that's what everybody always does. And we'll just put in hello world. And I have these uh, double quotes here. And at the end I need to put a semicolon to say that this is the end of that uh, statement or operation. Okay, so so what will happen now is it will print hello world, but then instantly close. Since we want to be able to see what we wrote, I'm going to add some uh, code at the bottom here that will keep our window open until we hit a key. So I'll write console.readkey, and that will make it so that we have to press a key to uh, continue the application from this line on. So let's go ahead and just run this right now uh, and see what happens. So I can either hit F5 or press this start up here to run a uh, debugged version of it. And we can see this printed hello world um, and I do have a command line open and notice that it looks uh, in our path where we built this and you'll see slash binary slash debug. So this is a debug version um, that did what we asked it to, printed hello world, and now it's waiting for me to press a key. So I can hit any key. So I hit H right now, and it closed um, the application, and we're back to editing. Um, so, so those are the important features to know about just testing console applications in the first place, is that it will actually disappear if you don't write read key at the end. OK, uh, so uh, we covered just printing a string here. Um, and why don't we go ahead and 
just look at you know what other primitive types there are here. So I mean, let's just try printing after we print hello world. Um, let's print a boolean here. So we can print literally just typing in true. That is recognized as a boolean. Um, and just know that this is not a string, so there are no double quotes before or after it. Um, that's how we get a boolean type. And um, we also can just write a number in here, like 2. Um, and so what this will do is convert all of these into a string type, um, and then it'll print it into uh, the console. So I mean, like, let's just go ahead and hit F5 here, and you'll be able to see all those printed just like, uh, just like before. Um, and notice that true has a capital T here, whereas over here it's a lowercase t, because again, it's a Boolean type that got converted to a string. Um, and so when it gets converted to a string, it automatically will uppercase uh, that T. Okay, um, and so I can just go ahead and close this. And really, ultimately, those are the basics of primitives that I want to get uh, clear. So let me go ahead and look uh, at our primitives uh, site over here. Um, just know that um, these are the base uh, data types inside of C Sharp. So you use keywords or like key numbers in the case of integers and floats and doubles um, to show these data types. And they always are represented by keywords differently than if you were to represent a custom made type or a type of a class that you created or an enum, for example. Um, so don't worry about that. And just know that we're going to be using these as the base data in general uh, in the next episodes. And so with that said, um, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to see the rest of these tutorials. Um, and uh, in the next one, we're going to cover uh, you know, performing operations on these primitives. So I'll see you then.